Welcome to the Fresh Hit Podcast. Regular edition, we're here with our boy Chris Bruce, a.k.a. Detroit Mogul, Mogul, man. We're going to talk about becoming internet landlord. Let's get into it, guys. We are live. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Fresh Hit Podcast, man. We got a little bit of an earlier show, guys. We got three shows planned for you guys today. So this is part one of the three, Pete. We got our boy Chris Bruce and Alice, a.k.a. Detroit Mogul. You guys have seen him before. We talked about wholesaling houses last time he was here. Today, we're going to talk about becoming internet landlord. Before we get into it, guys, number one, patreon.com slash fresh fit. Check us out over there for all the all the behind the scenes content. You can't find anywhere else of us kicking out annoying girls um, and all the other craziness that happens that probably isn't safe for you. And Zoom calls. And Zoom calls as well. So check us out over there. Okay, that's number one. Also. Don't forget to like this video, guys. Subscribe to the channel. I just realized we we're looking at our numbers earlier. A lot of you guys are ninja watchers. You watch our stuff, and you're sitting there with your fucking mask on, like, oh, shit, bro. I ain't going to like none. I ain't going to fucking subscribe. I ain't going to do nothing. Like the goddamn video. Subscribe to the channel. Okay, hit that red button. And then also, don't forget to hit the, hit the ding notifications. You can bell. get notified. We have the bell. There we go. So that um, you guys get notified anytime we release a new video, especially with heat like this. We got a lot of value guys giving to give you guys today. Also, uh, check us out on freshwarepodcaststore.com, guys. Get the merch over there. All t-shirts that Fresh never wears on air. Check them out over there, freshwarepodcaststore.com. Also, guys, we got another YouTube channel. It's called Fresh and Fit Clips, okay? We release two clips on there per day yep. and one clip on here per day. And also, guys, we're going to make a shorts channel here, which is going to be live anytime, any second now. So uh, you're going to see all the shorts going on that channel. We're no longer going to be posting shorts on this one, guys. It's going to be on our other channel, so if you which want is Fresh and Fit Shorts. For Money Monday, check out that clip channel and the short channel as well. Exactly. Um, and then, um, other than that, I guess we can get right into it, man. Yeah, we can. Right? Yeah, yeah let's get right into it. Chris, welcome back to the welcome show, man. How are you, bro? Guys, Don DeMarco. Don DeMarco. What's new with you, brother? A lot, man. A lot. Um, but now nah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back, man. Fresh admire. Appreciate y'all bringing me on here again. Um, a lot's happened the past, I think I was on July. Yes. Yeah. Last time. Mm-hmm. Um, still wholesaling, still, you know, teaching people how to wholesale, but. Right now, um, what I started in 2022 was a lot of people were trying to ask me, how do you actually launch a course? Like, how do you launch a successful course? How do you launch a mentorship business? And so I said, you know what? I don't want to necessarily create a course on how to create a course, but I want to create an agency where we can actually build out their courses and their funnels and really show them also as well how to successfully map out and actually build something that can actually make six or seven figures. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically, like, like it's it. a support system. Like, for example, they have an idea, they could come to you, right? Kind of build out for them. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I like that. And, and, and instead of releasing a course on how to make a course, <laughs> aka Coreception, Coreception, right there. <laughs> Coreception, you know what I'm saying? If you guys ever seen that movie, Inception. Uh, any chats, Chris, or we get right, we could just get right into it. Yeah. Um, we go for now. Okay. All right. So, um, so can you tell us a little bit about um, who you are? Because we know who you are. Yeah. Some of the yeah. people might not recognize you. Right. Uh, it's been a while since you've been on. Can you just tell them about? who you are, what you do, and uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So entrepreneur, been in 13 years in the game. Uh, started in real estate wholesaling back in 2009, flipping properties, bank on foreclosures. Uh, transitioned into uh, later on, people were asking me how I was so, so successful. So I said, all right, well, let me go ahead and start teaching. Mm-hmm. So I started teaching people how to successfully flip houses as well through wholesaling. Um, did amazing. We've had five fifty three hundred people come through our program um tons of success stories all on youtube you can check it out and um it's been a great you know it's been a great run and i just for me i was i'm not gonna say i was getting bored but i wanted to do something that was a little bit more creative right and so people were asking me like chris man we see that you know for instance last year um neo matter of fact um, me and neo, to our yeah, boy neo davis neo. Mm, yep we uh Went on a ClickFunnels stage. Uh, ClickFunnels is this entrepreneur named Russell Branson create this software, how to create funnels or whatever. So you we won both, a prize, right? Yeah, yeah. I we, saw it on, we, on Instagram. Yeah, we, we run um, two comma clubs. So basically when you hit a million dollars with one course. Goddamn. Yeah. So, and you can't fake that, man. Yeah, you, you can't, can't, you can't fake that to get that With plan. the numbers and stats. Yep. And that's yeah. like legit. Yep. 
So speaking with him, you know, I was like, man, people were asking me, Chris, how do you create a course that can make that much money? Like, I want to, you know, like learn how you were able to successfully launch something. I said, all right, again, I don't want to create a course that's teaching the course. Many of other people do that. And that's when I decided in 2022 to start my agency and really focus on that. So that's what I've been focusing on. It's just really build, do, taking out the the guesswork, the hard work that most people come up Because y'all guys got a course. Yeah. Right. DMs yeah, on demand. Yeah. Yeah, and teach hot. you guys how to womanize on Instagram. There you go. <laughs> I thought you too. Yeah. So speaking of that, so when y'all launched y'all course, did y'all have any um, like instructions or mentor that that help y'all launch it? Or we we did. Yeah, we did. Fortunately, um, but you know, if we didn't, we would have really messed up, bro. Like, yeah. um, you know, we a shout out to our guy uh, Jeremy, yeah. um, at Jeremy. So he he helped us out um before. Uh, but yeah, like if it, it's definitely difficult if you don't know what you're doing, mm-hmm. like, like honestly, it really is. Like, if you don't know what you're doing, you, you, you drop a course, yeah, like numbers are gonna go down because if you don't know the market properly, yeah. you don't know you how don't. to support the actual course. And, and this is years ago now, this is almost two years ago when we too. were when we were dealing with him, yeah. so but yeah, so yeah. And, that's, and that's another thing too is like y'all both, you know, y'all have a brand, right? Mm-hmm. So you can pretty much come up with a course, anything. But there's a lot of people that want to come out with a course that has good information, but they don't have a brand yet. Mm, yeah. So it's like, here's how you also build a brand and a following. And then here's how you bring something unique to the marketplace. That's the difference. And it's funny because in school, you know, you have an education system and a, a, a curriculum, but with a course, you need the same thing. And to Facts. break it down to certain parts, you need someone to help you with that process. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people think like, well, why would I create a course when I can go on YouTube and learn for free? Yeah, that's most of the questions people ask. Like, of course. but the thing about it is that people want something that is packaged up, mm-hmm. right, where they can just go in and watch the training videos or the manuals or whatever. Yep. And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how much free information is on YouTube. People are still going to buy from somebody they like and trust and has that proper information. Of course, and and that's that's what really what it comes down to is that really it's not that they're necessarily paying for the information; they're paying to ha- find it in one location uh, from someone that they like, know, and trust, of course, that, like you said before, and then um, that it's all packaged into one situation where they can go back to it and continuously get that information right. without any issues, you know, and they can play it back or whatever. And then also, you know, a lot of the times you're not going to put your best stuff on there. Like, uh, on, like, for example, on our Instagram course, there's not a lot of things on there that we could put that like on YouTube. You know, yeah. there's some things that are just not, <laughs> not, uh, not, not safe, <laughs> not safe for YouTube. So, uh, so that makes Asagony. sense. <laughs> it, exactly, yeah. And you know not only that, saying? even think about this, right? The time frame. If you just spend all your time on YouTube looking for these uh, same articles and the same like help, it's gonna maybe take your time. years or even weeks, months. Yeah. You never know. Uh, hour, it'll take hours of research to find each piece of information that you need from a certain content creator, assuming it's even there. Um, and it's even you know put in good quality or relevant or whatever it may be. Because yeah. I don't think people understand like how many videos there are on YouTube and how many content creators there actually are. Too right? many. So. Um, so, okay. So tell us about beca- being like, what is an internet landlord? Bro? Yes. So internet landlord is actually the name of my company. It started in 2011. And I was like, you know, being in real estate wholesaling, I was, you know, taught to go become a traditional landlord. Mm-hmm. I own properties as well. Mm-hmm. But the cash flow that it makes, that you make from buying property, especially like right now where the market is crazy. Yeah, bro. You know, to make 10 grand a month owning property you got to come out with so much capital or raise capital versus if you get a course, right? Something that you're good at, something that your expertise or have knowledge in. Let's say the course is a thousand bucks. You only need 10 people. You know, if I want to make 10 grand a month cash flow from the, from, you know, being a traditional landlord, I mean, how many single family houses do you have to have? Well, I, I can speak to that right now. Uh, you know, I, I bought seven properties last year. Right. And um, yeah, guys, I mean, you have to have quite a bit of capital to put, Nowadays with the housing market, you got to put 25% down, damn it. So it's like you got to put 25% down, then you got to go through all the BS of closing and, you know, inspections and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now I'm, I'm past that. I'm right around 11, something, almost 12. But it took me buying seven properties, raising up quite a bit of capital, like you were saying before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, credit checks, the right. issue, the pain in the ass of it is to like, you know, get all your paperwork together to do a loan. I mean, there's nothing I hate more than gathering all my financial documents to buy a house, bro, and try to get a loan. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. So um, I definitely know what you're talking about when it comes to that pain of like owning properties. And on top of that, that there's tenants and management, yeah. you know? So that's another pain in the ass that you got to have as well. Um, which did you deal with that as a wholesaler or, or, or were you just like buying it and then yeah, get rid just, of just buying it and reselling. But I, when I started off, I started off as a landlord. Mm. And so I went yep. through that whole, you know, issue. Yeah. And so again, I'm not knocking 
buying traditional real, you know, buying real estate, being a traditional landlord yeah. is not bad. Yeah. For me, what I believe is the internet landlord, the difference is, is that you get to cash flow from the internet. Yep. You get to use For sure. your books, videos, things like that on the internet as your rentals in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, and you can intellectual property and you get to basically rent that out or sell that to people yeah. and you cash flow from it. And so I say real estate is a way to preserve wealth. And for me right now, what I believe is that the internet is a way to create wealth. Yeah, that's so true. I think about it as like the metaverse, right? You buy a property in the metaverse, you don't have to worry about maintenance, property managers, tenants, you just buy it and you hold it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a course, you make a course one time, you yep. can market it to different people, in different areas, maybe different countries, and then get money cash flowing every single month. As, as much yeah. as I love real estate, yeah, I got to agree with you, man. Like it, it is definitely not easy. You know, yeah. I have my parents manage my properties in Connecticut and I have some here in Florida and that I got my, my real estate agent also acts as my property manager. And yeah, it, it's incredibly um, intrusive to your time. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but like uh, every morning, I'm pretty much before I go to sleep, because you guys know I'm like nocturnal, I'm talking on the phone with my real estate agent, trying to like get them to like figuring out, trying to find deals, dealing with tenants, all this other stuff. So it is incredibly taxing. And, you know, having uh, an online digital product that has very low overhead right. is huge because you're making the money in your sleep with sales. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then I agree with you 1000% to create wealth. It's fantastic. And then you can take that money and put it into real estate, which is exactly. what you guys saw me do. Right. But, right. but yeah, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. It is a pain in the ass. And then also <laughs> you were saying how many single family homes you have to buy. You got to buy a lot because a bunch of my properties are, are not single. They're actually mostly duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. Okay. So I got seven and I'm hitting that. You guys would need to buy even more if it was just single family homes. Cause we only got one door. Think right. about so, it. I scale wise, right? I can have one course mm -hmm. and scale it to many customers versus yeah. a property, maybe one unit, two unit, three unit, and then that's it. That's my fixed income versus yep. a course, man, right. it's unlimited access. Yeah. And the thing about too is that, so I started like really focusing on building this, like my business as far as teaching. I, I really wasn't focused on it until 2014. Mm. I went to this mastermind and it opened my eyes to all of the things that you can teach. See, some people think that, oh, I need to teach something that has to do with business or finances or things like that. It's not true. There was a lady on there that was teaching a course on how to brush your teeth properly, making six months a year. Yeah. What? What? I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Teaching people how to brush their teeth correctly? Yes. No one uh, does that. You bro, know? bro. It was funny. <laughs> I saw a course, a guy teaching you how to drink water correctly. Wait, what? I can't believe it, bro. What? How to drink water correctly. Nigeria scammer. And it, it sells. <laughs> it, it sells, bro. You go two like, times. You drink at a certain time of day, this this amount of water, like through this type of like plastic or not plastic, like uh, glass. I'm like, bro. But Finesse. people buy it though. Finesse. That's the thing. Because it's supposed to make you a healthier person. So There was another one that I ran across that there was um, a guy that was teaching dudes how to go out and sleep with strippers without paying. Man, I did that His for first free. Advice. <laughs> I did that for free, we man. should do that. <laughs> Yo, we should teach that real. goddamn course. Man. <laughs> we don't spend no money, bro. Legit. So now nah, it works, bro. Yeah. Listen, man, you could be an expert in any area of life. Once you're confident in it, you have experience. Mm -hmm. Why not teach it? Yeah, no, for sure. But brushing teeth and drinking water, like what the fuck? Hey, man, look. Bro, I'm about to come out with a course on how to just eat. Go hey, man. <laughs> you need water. this really important so that you can live. You need to eat, bro. <laughs> how to take a shower. Yeah, how to take a shower. Yo, I bet you, right? <laughs> the girl that sells bath water. She made a course on the sell bath water. All it right. goes to buy it. Oh yeah, monetize that. You switch not? studies. Yeah, literally. It's fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> so, um, so, so, what is it being an internet landlord then? What is yeah. that exactly? So, like exactly. I said, what it, what it is 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 being a person that has intellectual property. So, you may have an ebook that you may sell out. You may have a digital course, right? You might have a softwares, and you use this and you put it on the internet and use social media to get to get your tenants, aka your customers. So that's what the internet landlord is. It's okay. just basically learn how to cash flow from the internet. Because we're in the era now is we went from brick and mortar to click and order, right? I like, I like that. I like that, man. <laughs> click and order. Yeah. And so that's why I say like the internet is one of the greatest things to be able to, you know, condemn, produce and create wealth. And I feel like everybody, if you have some type of expertise or knowledge, you're doing yourself a disservice to the world if you don't actually teach other people. Mm. Okay. So um, when it comes to like, you know, selling products on the internet, there's different tiers, right? You got right. like, you know, your, your low ticket stuff, right? Yep. Like maybe let's say an ebook or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, your higher tiers and everything. Can you break down for the people? Cause, cause we get this question a lot, which I hope a lot of you guys are here. You guys that want to make money on the internet always ask us, Hey man, how do I make money on the internet? How do I make money on the internet? This is the episode. So can you kind of walk us through, um, low ticket stuff all the way up to the high ticket? Absolutely. So low ticket stuff is your ebooks, like 
thirty dollars, forty dollars, twenty some dollars, depending on what niche you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, you Zoom have, calls. Hmm? Zoom calls. Mm, I wouldn't. Say, I guess that's kind of low ticket. Yeah, you, you can say that a if it's ticket. if it's recorded and right, saved, yeah. right? Right. Okay. You got courses that's like ninety seven bucks. That's I have some digital courses that are ninety seven dollars. It's low ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much anything that's under a thousand dollars is kind of you know pretty much low ticket until you start getting over a thousand dollars you start getting to like the mid ticket and the thing about the low ticket stuff is that it's easy to produce like customers right and low ticket has this um it, it it's, it's important to have some low ticket pr- products because what they've said is that people that pay pay attention so even if somebody gives you a dollar so so true you know they need to pay to pay attention they have to like it's it's just something different when somebody actually pays you for something more and long as the experience is good even on low ticket they're more likely to go ahead and ascend to the next product we've had people that bought our products for seven dollars and then pay us 10 grand for mentorship mm. damn because they they saw the value they saw the value and they got um a transformation even from the lower stuff so that's the whole thing is that gotcha. the lower ticket stuff works as long as it's more value that they get from it versus what they paid for. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so you would price it like anything under 97, a hundred bucks you would say is considered low ticket. Yeah. Not really, really under a thousand for real. Under a thousand. Yeah. Okay. Depending on what yeah. niche, of course, like if you're selling make money online, mm, under 497 is low ticket. Okay. Uh, or if or let's say for instance, you're selling, selling fitness, there's yeah. fitness stuff that's like, 20 30 bucks yeah i was considered low ticket it's yeah. funny back in the day what i would do bro i'll watch all the content on youtube of that creator and i'll save up money for my job to buy the course uh, later on so i got all the content for free learned from that i got some value then i bought the course got even more value and then from that i was able to expand on my expertise, expertise in that area so that's that's really good right and so for you speaking of your course do y'all have it at a certain price or do y'all do subscription t- 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 um so we we launch it every couple months and close okay. it and then we close it gotcha yeah so we do we do the because the, because it's just like a pain to like always constantly like be promoting it all the time so we want to focus on other stuff so we open it and close it at various times see i can show you how to keep it so you ever thought about putting the evergreen evergreen there you go we have we have well, thought about that we should okay. actually yeah we, we have thought about that so um, people can ask him for it but yeah, we just be like, nah, it's closed, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we just remember, we were like, yeah, nah, nah, man, like, private. yeah, it's, it's private. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Is, we have a Telegram group with that same course, and they're always getting, adding value in it as well. So that, that chat alone has value, but maybe we should make it evergreen. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I We've thought about it, but it's like, I, I like to do the launch because then, you know, the scarcity works. It's uh, two different types of marketing, right? You got the evergreen sure. where you're constantly yeah. like, using yeah. you know funnel uh, uh like using ads and everything else like that to push it to or you could do scarcity where you're just like hey it's only open now then you can you you know blast the ads then which i guess you know it, there's two different ways to do it plus um we don't need to having our instagram secrets anyway yeah I mean, I feel well like you know what Let, let's let's teach the people a little bit yeah, so let, like let's break down uh the difference between evergreen and we can use ourselves uh, yeah. even as an example here evergreen versus um scarcity marketing right so doing it the way to launch is actually uh there's a guy jeff walker that created this whole launch thing and so that actually is very effective. Yeah. I've right? been through his course before. Yeah. yeah. It is, it's very effective of, of having it because like you said, it's the scarcity mindset. So if somebody knows that's only going to be available one time, mm-hmm. you got to buy it between, you know, three, four, five day period. You're going to get a rush of sales, right? The difference in um, between launch and evergreen is that you're going to push a whole bunch of sales in through that time, but then all the rest of the time, you're not going to make any money, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I like Evergreen personally more so. I've done launches before; they've been pretty successful. But I personally like Evergreen, where I can continue making money in my sleep, you yeah, know, day in day. And out. most people do like Evergreen; yeah. They, yeah. they do. I mean, it, it, if I'll be honest, for most people, it is probably better just do it Evergreen. Guys like doing what we do is probably not the best thing. But um, I'm thinking we could do High Value Academy Evergreen. Yeah, we could potentially do that Evergreen. Yeah. See, we're 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 having a business discussion right now in front of you guys. <laughs> Listen, man. God damn it. Have an open mindset. You never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. But no, for us, it's just like because we're so focused on the podcast yeah. that like right. we do it where it's like, hey, um, when we do the launch, then we'll like kind of focus the content towards that and um and then do it for a short period of time and then close it. You know, that's smart. And that's then, just smart. I think for y'all business model, it's probably better if y'all do a launch. Do y'all have a continuity program at all either? Like, Tell us what it, I don't know, know what that, that is. Okay, so, yeah, so well, a continuity program is like Netflix. Think about that. Okay. Where they can get you all content and they're paying a subscription base. Like, y'all got Patreon. Oh, oh, like yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patreon, yeah. yeah. So subscription service is Patreon, yeah. Basically, yeah. But yeah. You, you mean for the course itself? But you could have one outside of the course, yeah. As a, Like, let's say, for instance, they get to um, your Discord or Facebook group. 
and they may get a call once a month from y'all. Mm. You could build up where they're paying a monthly subscription for that, and like behind the scenes, kind of like like like, like on Patreon. It's kind of like Patreon, but do y'all do calls with those people or no? Yeah, we do one monthly Zoom call. Okay, on, so, on Patreon. Okay, okay, on Patreon. But the thing about Patreon too, and and I guess you know, see you guys, see where now, now you guys are kind of like getting in involved in a, like a brainstorming thing here. Yeah. The thing about Patreon that I don't like that OnlyFans actually does really well in is that OnlyFans allows you to sell content like upsells, uh, upsells on there mm-hmm. constantly, which. Um, we, which we had a discussion with Bam Man Kevo. That's how he pretty much makes a million dollars a month Yo, on OnlyFans. Fancy, Crazy, bro. Shout out to it, Kevo. It, yeah, shout out to our guy Bam Man Kevo. He's making like a million month, a month on 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 uh, OnlyFans, and it's because he's he's putting out a product like a ten dollar, twenty dollar product, fifty dollar product. You multiply that by you know the amount of subscribers he has on there. It's crazy. And then now I see why these girls make so much money. But you know, it's funny. You get the first, let's say, small investment, right? You see it, you get the information, you play it, you get the value. Like, damn, this is pretty good. I got results. So then you want more and more and more. Right. So that, that, that's when the upsell really works for you. Yeah. So no, for sure. So that's something like uh, you know that's the only thing that kind of sucks about Patreon is that well, we got uh, a new sponsor, man. That we should use instead of Patreon, possibly. Oh yeah, yeah. We we we're working on it. We're working on it, and we'll bring that up. So um, okay. So internet landlord is basically like owning, essentially getting customers on the internet, bringing them to your stuff. Right. So let's say someone doesn't have uh so let's say like most of our audience right the regular people they have a skill they have a, a high income skill that they want to teach people right how are they going to uh, i guess market themselves on the internet to grow a following to be able to market that high value skill yeah absolutely Brand. so the first thing that they should do is um write this down guys yeah right right right, right i like the goddamn man. video because he's about to drop some yeah. sauce on y'all and someone asked how, how can they get started right now um yeah go to the internet landlord.com Okay. Yeah, link is below guys right at the top of the description click it get in there all right so i didn't get started so they have this expertise and knowledge one of the simplest ways to start getting an audience in front of them would be shout outs all Bam. right so um during the pandemic uh what, what i did was um i paid shade room three thousand dollars to post me on their page and at the time they had 21 million people following so i put i, I spent about six grand a week and I would post my webinar mm-hmm. and I would get the people that would follow me, get them my webinar, sell it. I was making about 40, 50 grand every Sunday. Nice. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's fucking awesome. It's an investment. Off of, off of, so you would invest um, 3K mm-hmm. into uh, promo mm-hmm. and to, into Shade Room per week. Yeah. Or three to 6K. Yeah, three it, to 6K. I'll be on there one to two times a week. One time, one to two times yeah. a week. And then that all that traffic from the, those 21 million followers mm-hmm. would come in. And you don't, you only need to convert. <laughs> Not even a Smart, percent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that bam. And that was what was it for your wholesaling course? Yeah, my wholesaling course that was a thousand bucks. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which guys, that, that's uh we had a whole discussion on wholesaling. If you guys want to know about real estate wholesaling, that's a whole other, you know, we won't be talking about that on that yeah. one, but watch the other episode that we have. He broke it down from beginning to end uh, as far as like finding a deal to all the way, you know, pushing that deal over to an interested buyer and then making your money. Yeah. So uh so awesome. So you were yeah. making what 200k a month yeah it was good that's fucking awesome yeah and the thing about it is like i mean that was shade room i went super big mm-hmm. for all of us watching listen to this right you don't have to go that big there's yeah. small instagram pages 100 bucks 50 bucks for promo for promo just go into their link in their bio they might say dm for promo they might have an email email them and it's an easy way because the thing about it is that they have trust so if mm-hmm. they post on their page that hey you know check out this brand or check out this product or whatever people are going to follow you and they're going to you know end up tapping in with you that's how you can build your brand that's probably the easiest way yeah. before you even run advertisements on Facebook. shade room posts well. us for free but they talk shit <laughs> <laughs> like, you motherfuckers no. but that right there yeah one of the secrets that a lot of creators don't share for example yeah, yeah seriously pay for promo and you're like yeah how are they, they popping so bad is so so lit is because they're getting promo for outside sources. Yeah. They're driving them traffic. Yeah. And, for and they're exa- getting good promo. Yeah. <laughs> and for example, they control the narrative. Yes. That's very important. Yes. So having that power, bro, and just being able to pay for it, man, you take yeah. that. Yeah. Take and they're it. putting you in, they're putting you in a good light versus like with us, like, let's be honest, we can use our, us as example. You know, we oh, got man. our share room for, for fucking <laughs> the, the Asian dog thing, like kicking around and all this other shit. Oh my God, are they racist? But, it's great. It gets, it gets you promo to your shit, yeah. but it's some of it is negative, right? So yeah. it's like you're get, you could potentially get negative traffic. I mean, obviously, our brand can handle it because that's what the hell we do. We we offend yeah. people. This podcast, we don't give a fuck. We're the real think. flagrant. Yeah, we're the, exactly. <laughs> so it's not a big deal for us, but for other people, you yeah. need to control how how you're viewed. Let's be honest here. So that that's a fantastic way to control um, the image uh, is through is through promo. And you know, Bam Man Kevin actually mentioned that too. Like yeah, when he, he would manage uh, girls, 
he would go to like the littest OnlyFans chicks and he would just pay for promo. That's that's that, that's Easiest that's way. what you do. People yeah. are so worried about paying for promo, but my thing is, bro, the value that you get from it, yeah, and if you do it re- repeatedly, man, people because the more people see you, the more they want to come and trust you. And and for example, think about this if you pay someone for promo, right? Their audience has already been built, like you said earlier, so right. they trust that person. They say, yo. My boy, uh, Chris messes with uh, Neil. You know what? Let me check, check who Neil is. Yeah. For example, that trust in the audience comes over to you as well. Yep. Yeah. And it's nowadays too, you can like, you can find some of these YouTubers, some of these young YouTubers that got crazy subscribers. Yo. They don't even know how to make money. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Yo, that is so fucking true, bro. They'll, they like, yeah, they'll, they'll just they, be doing some. Dude, they grew, they, they grew so fast that like they just don't know how to monetize it. Yep. Yeah. So you just pay them. There you go. And you get in front of a bunch of uh, people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, that that, that you otherwise would have not been able to. And then uh, I think the big thing, too, also is like, can you tell the people as far as like um, making sure that their audience is going to be Align- like alignment. Yeah, alignment with what you're selling? So what, what would you give the people? On yeah, no, on absolutely. So you definitely want to go where your audience is. Right. So I went very broad with Shea Room because it necessarily of course. wouldn't be directly business audience. Mm-hmm. But with 21, 22 million people, I was like, you know, it's going to be. So you definitely want to go where your audience is. Um, if you are in fitness, for instance, you might want to go to some different fitness pages or something that's aligned with health. Yeah. Right. Because then that's going to, you know, bring in your audience. You don't want to go to little young TikTokers and <laughs> you try to yeah. pull up some. Yeah. TikTok conversion is terrible, man. Yeah, bro. I don't know why, but TikTok have a million followers plus 10 million, 20 million. They do promo. It doesn't do anything. No, no shit, bro. It's trash. Don't do anything like, yeah, promo. <laughs> TikTok, that's a whole other. <laughs> Go to YouTube. Yeah, man. YouTube. Yeah, I, I think if there's one social media platform you want to really be on, it is is for for men like YouTube, and then yeah, then second is Instagram. Yeah, yeah. by far, no, absolutely. I mean, Instagram, and that's the thing. Instagram is one of the easiest ways to build up a following. Yeah, but we yeah. can't we can't forget Facebook though, because Facebook is number one in terms of engagement in terms of like people actually watching long form content. All the people are on there. Facebook's a legend still, but Meta, so to speak. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and that's another thing you can do too. So another thing is that let's say for instance you got you on Facebook. I'm not I'm on there, but I'm not on there. Mm-hmm. It, that makes sense. I'm not really on there. My team is. Yeah, same. <laughs> same us. Yeah. We, we yeah. we're not on it either. We have a guy that manages our Facebook and pay, our Twitter for but us. But they pay the most though. They yeah. do on all platforms, they pay the most. Yeah. So what you could do is you can create a Facebook group, right? Free Facebook group. And then let's say for instance, you teach, I don't know, crypto, for instance, right? And you create this crypto Facebook group. And what you tell people is, hey, listen, come to the group for free. You know, we're going to give away some gems, things like that. You put in everybody in a Facebook group. From there, you give away, you know, some game and stuff like that. Then you have those people in there. You can actually also upsell them your course. I know a lot of people, um, and I've done it before with my wholesaling stuff too, is I had a group, I think we had over 9,000 people uh, teaching virtual wholesaling. And a lot of those people in the group, because I was dropping game and giving lives and stuff like that, they would go out and then buy my course. Mm. And you have that, like it's your group, so you're the person that's controlling it. You know, yep. yeah. No, Facebook groups are also an excellent way. I know some people like monetize, like you know, make their Facebook group paid. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't know what, what, what are your, yeah, like yeah. Th- that's probably Just keep it open. Yeah, keep it open. Yeah. Same thing, like what membership chat. Like I know, like you know, people, some people like to have like a membership chat on their YouTube. Guys, don't worry. We we we're never gonna make y'all pay to to be in the chat and talk shit, bro. So shout out to you guys. <laughs> yeah, to in the chat. You guys will be able to make fun of Fresh's, uh, you know, stutter and Chris's peanut butter mouth for free for for years to come. Don't worry. Yeah, um. All right. So I hit some of these chats real quick. Mine's real son Hamza. Okay, fuck you, dear father Myron. I'm your real biracial son, not Myron Junior. Mommy told me about this podcast. I love you, daddy. What the hell? Jokes on you because I got um a vasectomy. Just kidding. No, I did not. All right. Good <laughs> afternoon, gentlemen. Let's recall our daily sermon. Uh, BJ a day keeps the prison guards away. Okay. Okay. Bill Cosby, $10. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa. Yikes. Uh, five bucks. Uh, Chris Bruce, Google, and pull up that stripper course on your phone to show us. <laughs> <laughs> they want that course, buddy. They, they want that course. And then, oh, uh, we got random guy, 20 bucks. Uh, shout out to the whole crew, crew at Fresh and Fit. Just want to hear your thoughts on buying right now in social Riverside area. SoCal. Uh, Oh, SoCal. Okay, yeah. uh, my bad. Uh, days away from selling our home, looking into purchasing a new construction home. Prices are crazy, though. I, I wouldn't buy in Southern yeah, California right now. Hell outside no. Outside of California, bro. I mean, uh, Chris, what's your what's your take on that buying in Southern California right yeah, now? Yeah, not right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The market is ridiculous. Man. Yeah. Even here in Miami, it's bad. You, oh, you yeah. try to buy a, a a fucking duplex, it's like five hundred thousand dollars, and it makes like two grand a month. Man, the cheat it's code, like you go negative. The cheat code is uh, should I say it or not? What? what Orlando, bro. 
Oh yeah, or yeah, Orlando is is uh, is is one of the best markets right now in Florida. Yeah, crazy single family homes get a, a decent price there. But yeah, Miami right now is I, I'm damn near to say it's it's almost even the rent, bro. It's now like we're buying the rent is crazy. Yeah, dude, yeah. finding a spot here now is almost impossible. Yep, it's the time to sell. Yes, you have something to yeah. sell. Yep. Yeah. 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 But not buying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's tough. One more. Uh, and then uh, Monster. Monster, ten bucks. F and F just wanted to come uh, up here, show you some love. I started my own YouTube after watching you guys rise. I do cinematic nice. camping vlogs, and I know how hard it is to build a channel from the ground up. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's definitely it's tough. Easy. That's a, that's an interesting niche, though, man. Cinematic camping vlogs. Goddamn, bro, you out here in the wilderness you getting chased by you bears. Can show anything, bro, that yeah. you're into, that you have a expertise or I want to say advanced level of knowledge about, Facts. and they share people. You never know who, who's into it too. There, there's this one channel. Uh, I think it's called City Prep. Shout out to them, man. Uh, like. It's about prepping for like the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. like, like being ready and having knives and having electricity, uh, batteries, all this other shit. I'm like, damn, bro, I should like watch this channel, man. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, people, like, a, like, <laughs> just you speaking of that, there's, there's a, uh, I can't think of the name of the, the, the guy, but they sell gear and uh, training on that. It make like, I don't know, some some crazy number find a thousand a month or something yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. especially like with this war that happened with Zonic ukraine and apocalypse. russia yeah. like people going even more crazy like we did a whole broadcast with a guy out in ukraine he was you know giving us like the lowdown of what the hell's going on over there but yeah bro when there's conflict you know i always say when there's blood in the streets there's definitely a way to eat you know what i'm saying there's yeah. ways to make money right now the stock market is like terrible but yeah i just picked up some more vgt you know what i'm saying etf uh for um um which is the the tech fund for vanguard if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. right for the technology ETF. So, like, yeah, man, it's like at, at low as hell. It's like under four hundred bucks. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll pick some of that up, man. So, you know, just buying a dip. You know, like, there's always a, there's always a way to make money in chaos, right? Always, always. Um, so, okay, so, uh, so people have, uh, so, so, can you tell them a little bit about like building up their funnel and making their money Absolutely. and becoming that internet landlord? Yeah. So one of the first things before you even start a course, I tell everybody the one thing that you definitely need mm -hmm. is you need to have what is called a unique selling proposition, a USP. Okay. All right. And the USP is basically, if you think of, let's say, Domino's. Domino's USP was like, do you have your delivery in 30 minutes uh, or less? If not, it's free. That's what oh, makes them I remember them when they were promoing that shit, market. like in the early 2000s, man. Right. Geico, you know, 15 minutes, save you 15%, right? Yeah, so car insurance. Car insurance. That's their USP. That makes them unique from the marketplace. You have to have something unique because if you just come out with, Chris Bruce's wholesaling academy. It's like, what's unique about that? Yeah, ours ours was how to um, what was what was what was ours? Yo, for games of demand, bro, how to not be left on scene. Oh yeah, yeah, how to not yeah. And yo, shout out to one of our students, man. Came in, was not getting no play, got hella uh, responses. He had forty dates lined up. There we Instagram. go. Yeah, crazy, bro. Yeah, Other in Colorado. So, so just for those of you guys that are joining in the show right now. We're talking about becoming internet landlord, okay? Mm -hmm. So step one is you need to build um, an audience to a degree. And the easiest way to do that is through paid promo. Shout outs. Uh, shout yeah, outs, shout outs, paid promo. Whether you're going to a big um, Instagrammer or YouTuber or whatever it may be, you're going to get, basically to get eyeballs put on top of you uh, and you're paying for it because you didn't have to build the audience. You're kind of paying to lease their audience for a bit, right? So that's the easiest way to do it. And then number two, we're talking about making a unique sales proposition Similar to Domino's, you know, I remember that shit, man. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't get your pizza in like thirty minutes, whatever. This is early two thousand guys. We're showing our age here. Uh, you know, they give it to you for free. Um, so now they got the so, so they've been paying for promo. Yep. They got a unique um sales tagline that yep. they're you know trying to get people out there. Now what's next? So the next thing is you have to have the unique mechanism. So unique mechanism is what right? So you have the unique selling proposition is kind of the like um or I should say the unique selling proposition is what the unique mechanism is the how. So for instance. With y'all down at DMs, right? Is that the name of it? Uh, DMs, yeah, on DMs on demand. DMs on demand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in a sense, it's dating advice, right? But y'all and y'all have the USP is, you know, it's different, right? It's yeah. just not saying we're gonna show you how to get dates. Mm -hmm. Y'all unique mechanism is showing you how to use Instagram DMs. So it's how how you're gonna deliver on this. Yep. Right. Right. And so that's important. So for instance, uh, with my wholesaling course, mm -hmm. I came up with how to flip properties virtually. Uh, without stepping foot inside our properties. Oh nice. shit! Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's that's what I teach. I teach how to do it virtually. You don't have to never ever step foot in the house or meet homeowners or buyers or anything. So my unique mechanism was this thing I came up called the taco method. So the taco method basically was I just it was a story where you like tacos. I actually do. <laughs> uh, the, 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 
Wait, what? I like tacos. Like fresh, bro. That's, little, that's a pause or what? I don't know. <laughs> Who doesn't love good tacos, bro? Yeah, you, said yeah, it, you like tacos? Oh, I, know, I like tacos. Yeah. yeah pause. Yeah, I do too. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> Okay. All right. Sorry All right. about that. That's cool. So, <laughs> so, so the taco method. Um, basically, it was a story of me being a Taco Tuesday, eating my tacos. Right. Phone rings. I look at my phone. I'm like, I don't know this number. So I didn't answer it. I put it down. And two minutes, three minutes later, I got a text from the same number. And I'm like, oh shoot, it's one of my friends from high school I ain't connected with in a while. He's like, I got a new number. Hit me up when you leave. Or whatever. Boom. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. So. It made me realize, like, hold on, people don't answer phone numbers from numbers that are not stored in their phone. Mm-hmm. True, right? Your cell phone, you got a number, you like it's a bill collector or something. I like answering this, yeah, crazy ex or something. I like answering this, you know. But you will always respond to a text, text. message. So that's what I came with the taco. Or at least method. look at it. Or at least look at it, right? So the taco method was acronym for text message. After you text, you then analyze the the, the text that comes in with the response. C, you then call them, um, and then O, you make the offer, taco. And that was how we go after homeowners to find motivated sellers and deals. Damn. So that was my unique mechanism that I use. And the cool thing about when you come up with a unique mechanism is that- Te- no, Text, analyze, call, and offer. Offer, okay. The cool thing about when you come out with a unique selling proposition, unique mechanism, nobody can steal it from you. You can't go Google it. Y'all program, nobody can't Google that. Yeah, they can't. They, they, Facts. Y'all created it. Yep. So they don't even know how to, how to so, do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. You can't go find this information. So it makes it unique and different when somebody's like, well, why well, am I buy your course? Well, because we have this that you're not going to find anywhere else. Yep. It, it kind of, you know, explains it. You itself. know, that's a great point that yeah. you mentioned because two of, the, two of the properties that I own here in Miami, I get like postcards from people trying to buy it. And I'm like, what the fuck is this, 1995? <laughs> you know, whatever. And then sometimes I get random phone calls and I don't know who the hell it is. So I don't answer. Mm-hmm. Um. And one time I answered and it was an interested buyer that wanted to buy the house, but I was like, no, nah, I'm not interested. But had they texted me, mm-hmm. it would have I, I probably wouldn't I would have answered them way sooner, you know, yeah. versus like sending someone a postcard or someone call, cold calling people. They don't mm-hmm. know who the fuck you are. Nah. You know, if you know I'm the owner of the house and you got my stuff, why not send a text? Hey, we saw your house. We want to buy it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that that's actually a, a great thing. So so you were doing that to get to find uh, for motivated buyers. You were texting them. You were call, texting them. Then, you know, they would analyze it and then you would call them and then you would send an offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For motivated seller deals, that's what we used to do. So that's what I was teaching. I like that. Uh, uh, how to find deals through text. And then I just showed them, you know, also how to, again, do everything from your computer, your cell phone. And so that was made me unique to the marketplace. Even we still sell this, you know, training courses now, but that's what I tell everybody. When you come out with a course, you have to have that uniqueness. If yeah. it's not, it's just going to be a little like everybody else. So there's so many courses out there. How do you stand out? And for example, let's say you have this unique uh, proposition. Guess what? If my niche is, hey, you know what? I don't know how to do wholesaling, but uh, walking into property, I'm going to go to you. Versus yep. wholesaling is so broad. It's like, right. hey, here, there. Yeah. If I want to be at home doing it. I'm going to go to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, okay. So, a little quick recap, right? For the people that are just joining. We're talking about being an internet landlord aka controlling uh you know your destiny making money online right creating the wealth online so that you can invest into assets that will you know hold, preserve that wealth right so first we talked about being an internet landlord getting the people in you got to promo yourself right so create um and, and for some of you guys a lot of you guys here let's be honest you guys might not have a big uh, um following yet uh people don't know who you are but let's say you got an excellent skill you have you know maybe you're a great salesman maybe you're good at copywriting whatever else it is and you want to teach people how to do this skill right so it's a skill that only you or a few other people have you got to promo yourself we talked about you know going to a big platform hell you could go to like shade room and pay a couple thousand right and and get people to, over to your website to go ahead and buy your product or you can pay for smaller level people whether it's on youtube tiktok instagram what where did you notice like the best conversions were was it on youtube or instagram or Instagram uh, definitely. Instagram is good too. Yeah, Instagram okay. is definitely. I mean, YouTube definitely works too. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example. You know, shout out to Kevin. I was on his YouTube. Okay. And he he brought a lot of traffic to me. We did a yep. you know a YouTube interview or whatever. So yep. YouTube definitely works, but Instagram is so simple and yeah. easy. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you can like DM people and everything mm-hmm. else like that. It's mm-hmm. a lot simpler versus like creating like video content because you still gotta go ahead and film yeah, the like, stuff, YouTube right? YouTube is a full time career, yeah, man. It it's, is it's not a joke. Um so so you you know you get you basically you pay for the promo right whether it's a, a shout out an interview whatever it may be you do some promo then second you're gonna have a unique sales proposition which you use the example of uh, Domino's Pizza hey thirty minutes delivery or else it's free which is which is great right 
And in your case, you had your um your business where you're teaching people how to wholesale stuff. And your unique proposition was, hey, I will make I will help you um close deals wholesaling without leaving your house, which right. I think is going to be a, a very sexy you know attraction to a lot of people. A lot of people are lazy; they want to be able to make money without necessarily leaving their house, right? That's nice. like making money on a laptop is a very attractive proposition in 2022, Top right? Lifestyle. Yeah. And then third is a unique mechanism, aka the how. So I'm telling you the what, now I'm going to give you the how. Which in your case, it was the taco method, which is um, text, analyze, call, and then offer, which is actually unique. And I'm thinking in my head, like if these idiots had like wanted to buy my house for me, they should just like text it versus like trying to call or send postcards. Um, and then what's next? Yeah. So, so after you have that, then it's time to actually say, okay, let me build out my funnel, right? And everything in life is funnels. <laughs> you know, think about when you go to uh, McDonald's, all right? I don't eat at McDonald's, but you know, it's it's definitely as a funnel. Prime example, you go in, you ask for a Big Mac, what are they gonna say? You want fries with that? Fries with that? Super size me? <laughs> you want a yeah. combo right. nigga? Yeah. <laughs> you want a toy? Yeah. Exactly. No, no Chris. <laughs> no toys. Chris would say, okay, I get toys. the toy. This nigga, bro. <laughs> so I love the kids. It, it, you, pause, they bring you in and then they upsell you to other different things. Yeah. Right? Um, no matter where you go, you know strategically uh grocery stores have funnels because they have it set up where you know right before you buy the checkout what they got the magazines and little candy, candy. and gum yeah and gum. yeah and the they know that because that's when you drinks. go quick pick them up and that's extra and they're buys. cheap too and they're they're, cheap. Tr they're strategically priced mm -hmm. at below well i mean nowadays with inflation who knows but it typically was to be under th two to three dollars right right so you have to have that funnel to bring people in to get that information capture the information so a lead capture page then after that, you want to have a sales page that's going to basically have sales copy, written format, video, talking about the unique selling proposition, the unique mechanism, and mm -hmm. what they're going to get. Can you tell people what sales copy is? Because some people might yeah, not sure. be aware of that. That's yeah. like a very internet term, and people might not know. Yeah, so sales copy basically is, to put it blatantly, it's like a 24-hour salesperson it, written in text. So these texts, these words that are on this page are going to act as if you were to have a sales guy selling your stuff. For 24, you know, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. yep. So when they read it, they're like, oh man, this is definitely what I want. This is definitely exactly what I need to solve my problem. Mm -hmm. And they'll buy your stuff. Would you say that text is more effective than emails nowadays? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the open rates are higher. You know, emails nowadays, emails still work. And I send a lot of emails out. Yeah. But the open rate on text is still more. You know, emails, you got to deal with spam, Gmail promotion tab, you end up in. Yep. All type of stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, so they so they build the funnel and they're building the funnel by you said what a, a lead page first? Yeah, so lead capture page first because you want to capture somebody's information. Because the, the issue is that back in the day, most people had a traditional website. You send people to the website. Should we show them your web page to, to kind of give can, them an example yeah, to teach them how to how to yeah. do it? So um let's pull up the internet uh landlord.com. Um, and we're going to teach you guys right here on air how how to build uh, how how uh Chris actually built his page and how to build one. Yeah. So all right, so this is uh, my sales page, but it's also a capture page. So if you scroll down, I have a video. Mm -hmm. This is called a VSL. Um, you watch the video. The Rolls right. Royce, man. Yep. yep. Sheesh. Social proof, right? With, and with the, with the, the prize from ClickFunnels, right? Yep. yep. There you go. More What's social up? proof, exactly. What's going on, everybody? Yep. And today, I want to talk about how you can finally turn your knowledge or expertise into a six-figure online course or coaching business. Okay. How you doing, guys? My name is Chris Bruce, a.k.a. Detroit Mogul, a.k.a. The Internet Landlord. And I want to show oh, you. Oh, okay. Exactly so you have a PowerPoint presentation yeah, for them right here. So this is like Deuce, a, I like this. a DSL. Right. Okay. So we have to watch the whole Pause thing, it real quick, Chris. Okay. Sorry. But yeah, this so what well, people would is they'll watch that. Mm -hmm. And that is getting people to find out what it is I have to offer. Mm -hmm. So they'll see that I don't have a course. But I actually get into some of the problems that you go through. So that's another thing too. Yeah. When you're selling something, you want to make sure that you do a few different things. One, you have to have a hook. So I have to hook people in, right? What is something I'm going to grab their attention? Because our attention span is so short, mm -hmm. right? So we have a hook. Then we actually come up with and say, all right, after the hook, what is the problem? Right? So I'm talking about this is, you can do this, what I'm going to teach you without having to worry about this. We have to worry about getting stuck and hustling without that losing tons of money mm -hmm. because you want to call out, 
you want to call out that problem um, and then you offer the solution, which is your product. Mm -hmm. So that's what the VSL is actually going to teach in there. So you actually give them like a, almost like a free kind of yeah. to, mini training right. right there and then to, to, to give them some free value right there and Absolutely. let them know, hey, this is probably what you're dealing with. Here are some ways to mitigate that. Right. And then, oh, by the way, I actually have an entire thing that helps you with dealing with this issue. Cool. And if you had any, okay. any objections, you can kind of like clarify, clarify within them. that video. Yep. Okay, cool. Now I know exactly what I want. I'm down for it. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, can we pull up that, that web page again, uh, um, Chris, real quick? I want to also pull up your Instagram too as well. Your Instagram is very uh, good as well. Yeah. Um, Actually, he's a prime candidate for our DMs on demand in terms of like how he built his, up his page. To yeah. Be excellent. Yeah. yeah. No, great stuff. Um, so um, is there anything else you wanted to show, yeah, to show here yeah. or go back to the to actual yeah, web so get page? Out, yeah, get out. The, go yeah, back escape, to the web Chris. page. Yep, I'm pumped. Guys, there's so many gems here, man. I like the video, bro. Yeah, I like the goddamn For video. real, man. Okay. Go follow Chris as well. So you got like the big, bold print there. One on right. 100% done for you. Online course, sales funnel, and ads guaranteed to flood your business with new customers. Get the exact funnel that I used to scale to 1 million in eight months. Yeah. Damn. That's good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so, and then I see here that it's clean. There's not too much text on the at nope. the top of it. Yep. Big, yep. bold thing. And then, and then I get into like what the online course market is projected to be, you know, based off of. They're saying it's going to be worth 325 billion in 2025. I actually talk about what entrepreneurs want. So this is when we start getting to the actual sales copy. We start the text and the words that are on the page. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll see that I have a few different buttons on there where you can we call it call to action buttons. Okay. So when they click that button, if you scroll down. Yep. Yep. See right there. That, that yeah. Book now. I they see. click that, and then they're gonna have it where they can put their email address in now that's what i'm capturing their information so that way later on mm -hmm. i can follow with them because the thing about the sales cycles take six to eight times yes right? you need like what do they say like eight or nine contact points before yeah. you can actually make a sale so that's the reason why you get people to opt in because even if right now they're not ready to take action mm -hmm. later on with the text message email follow -up, stuff like that is where you can then convert them later on Right. Or they may just be waiting to watch you, watch your content, see who you really are. are. Yep. They want to get out trust with you to say, you know what? Okay, cool. This person is trustworthy. I like where they're going. I'm going to invest my money with them. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And also the other thing I like here is that you're, you're making them book a call. Can you tell us why you're having them book a call versus having a, 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 like a checkout page right here? Because I'm assuming, can they sell, can they buy from nope. here or they, ha they, they have to schedule a call, right? Yes. Can you tell them the methodology yeah, behind that? So with low ticket stuff, right? We talked about low ticket, low mm -hmm. ticket. There's not a big buying decision. So, you know, $20, $30, $97 is not going to break the bank. So with low ticket stuff, you would take them straight to a checkout page for them to buy. Yeah. When you start getting to the higher ticket stuff, things are, you know, going to cost thousands of dollars, right? We're doing something where we're building out your whole funnel. We're, we're, we're copywriters. We build your whole sales copy. We built the whole course for you. Yeah. So it's not something that's cheap. We need to also make sure that you are our ideal customer. Right. Yeah. So that's the reason why we want you to book a call, hear about your business, see if we actually can help you. Because you may have something that I'm like, we can't really help you. Yeah. And we don't want to take your money, even if you got it. Yeah. So that's why we do a book a call so we can find out more about your business, see if we can actually help you, see if it's a good fit. And then from there, we can, you know, talk talk about, you know, joining in. You're qualifying the buyer, which basically. actually is a very attractive thing to do. It's kind of like with girls, man. The deal with girls is sales too, man. Like, it's it like. Is. You're, you know, you're doing push and pull, like, okay, maybe Bro. we're not a good fit. You're flirting with her, whatever. You're not letting her know that you're that interested. It's the same exact thing. Bro, nowadays, I would say dating is, I want to say, 90% sales. It is. Because you got to funnel her in. You got to first off attract her and then close the deal while you're in that date. Yeah, because the other thing, too, is that, like, we, we just live in a market now where girls can always look at other dudes on the internet. So it's like Instagram, it's, with Instagram whatever. Average chicks, bro, getting like perfect example. Yeah. Let's say Chris DM the girl, right? Yeah, I DM a girl. Yep, you DM a girl. Yep, she got options now. What's she gonna choose? Yep, the mm -hmm. best marketer wins. Blue yeah, right. yeah, the blue, yeah, the, Listen, the, the man, marketer, the, the best, best market. marketer, <laughs> get in the booty. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's what I'm say, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, all right, so so you build their so you build their funnel for them everything. Now, yep. do they do they own do they they're on the hook for creating the product? I'm assuming though, yeah, right? they still have to create. They got to the create the product. They got to film it and everything. Right. But then once they have it made, they got their modules they done. To us, they give it to you. Everything out for them. Okay. Yep. And then we also teach them in the like I have a training program. We don't sell it, but we give that to them for free so they can actually learn. Like for instance, we have a resource with all the shout out pages. So we got over 125 Damn. pages that we've advertised on. 
that were successful. That were successful. Damn, that's that's we a huge one right there in See, itself. Yeah. You're a better man than me. I ain't sharing mine. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me hella money for those. Yeah. Those are gems. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So so you so um so hundred you said what hundred twenty five. Holy crap. Yeah. Damn. So right there, just just off that. Now let's say someone has no following, they can make an Instagram, right? Because let's be honest, there's a lot of people that like have successful businesses, but they don't really yeah. have internet presence like that. Right. And Bro, they want to start making money online. A lot of niggas with money, but they have no clout. They have no clout. Real mm -hmm. talk. And they have money, but they, they but they're not like you know, don't, not a lot of people know them. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe they sell like a tangible product that's in person. They have a business front and they make their money, but they want to go on the internet. And, you know, you could go ahead, get with Chris. He'll put you in touch with. You have no, you can make your Instagram. He has 120 people that you can promo with, that you mm. offer it as soon as you get on with him. This is one of the best examples of investing in yourself. Yeah. So you may not have the money per se or the clout, but if you invest in your, in your content, other people's platforms, it's like your content. Because you're seeing for a new audience, you're investing in yourself. So that's yeah. very good. Because mm -hmm. the whole thing about it is you got to get eyeballs. Yeah. You know, if you don't have eyeballs, you're probably, you got the best product in the world. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows about it. You're not going to make any money. That's true. I, I was saying, right, for example, marketing and for getting your business off the ground, they don't know who you are yet. And the mm -hmm. biggest thing, once they know who you are after promoting yourself or advertising, then from there they can actually buy from you or see what you're about. Yeah. I tell but, people, focus on you until the focus is on you. Yeah, you could be the best marketer, the best, uh, sorry, the best plumber, the best, uh, I don't know, electrician. But if no one's booking you, then what's the point? So, so yeah, there you go. Okay. And then it, for these people that are, that you're promoing them, or I'm assuming you have them at all different price points from a hundred bucks all the way to thousands of dollars for the yeah, higher. Absolutely. And, and so what we do too, is that we show them, okay, he, most of the time we're going to give them a low ticket course, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to build that for them. Yeah, but then we show them how to also ascend them to a high ticket program, mm -hmm. because the thing about it is, is that people will pay a higher dollar amount if they can get mentorship from you. Like you guys, do y'all offer any one on one mentorships or no? Yeah, we do, but we, do? I, I, we price them high on purpose so that we don't get booked to do <laughs> yeah. a lot of consultations. Yeah, people still book. I'm like, yeah. bro, I'm gonna take mine off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do we do the Patreon Zoom calls, but yeah, like yeah, yeah you know, doing. One on ones, it's like, yeah, dude. Now, and, bro, I, now I see why they have like, like what? Grant Cardone charges like 100k to do a consultation bro, with him. I rather some crazy. Some other stuff, man. Yeah. Many different ways. Yeah. But not one on one. That's like, ugh. my mentor yesterday or the Friday, mm -hmm. he offered something for a million bucks. Whoa. He did. He didn't get nobody that, that paid it, but he did. If you had a few people that paid a hundred grand, mm -hmm. so damn to talk to him for what, like an hour? Um, no, nah, not for an hour. He the hundred grand program. I think it was six months. Damn. Okay. But it was like he'll take. It was like two sessions in person. Right. Yeah. So they'll come. So it's like for instance, y'all. I don't know what mentorship I have, but let's just. I'm just gonna brainstorm real quick. What y'all could do is y'all could have a uh, offer where y'all offer people to um help them show them how to launch their podcast. Oh. Yep. And they pay. They'll pay like thirty grand for that. I mean, we got right. the gems, bro. Yeah. And then, and then y'all can say, okay, well, here it'll be fifty k, but y'all y'all can come to our studio. We will record y'all first episodes here. Shit. Oh shit. Or a hundred k. You know, like people. And, and the thing about it is too is that you might think, well, who would actually pay that amount of money? Nowadays, they have different funding companies. So that's something that we offer too is that we know that everybody doesn't have the money. Mm -hmm. We have a funding company where we actually can fund them. They're basically their 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 mentorship program where they may pay, you know, a few hundred dollars a month and they'll be able to take that loan out mm -hmm. to basically fund their education and their mentorship program. And it's cheap. It's not that you much money. You know what? Money. There's, there's a, we were talking about that. Um, Like there's, there's companies out there now that like literally will invest in content creators and yep. they'll like give you some money so that you have some capital to like, kind of like get your stuff off there. And I think like, I think like Mr. Beast used one of them, like where because he'd be doing this crazy yes. stuff where he spend a lot of money it's like to like do these stunts. Yeah, it's like a record label. Yeah, they invest in a rapper out front, and then they want to return in the back end. Yeah, Mr. Beast basically he has some big projects going on. Yeah, they say hey, you know what I need some help, some collabs on this. They give the money up front. Yep, and he's making hell of money now, so it yep. works out. Yeah, yeah. So no, so you're you're you do that as well for people. Yeah. Oh yep. shit. So for some of you guys out there that want to really like get involved with like you know not only will you help them with getting promo, but you'll also help them with it, it, with getting some capital. So where they can run ads. That's another thing too. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about running ads? Yeah, absolutely. So run ads, the thing about it is running, I've ran ads since 2013. Mm. Um, spent, I don't know, maybe like three, a little over $3 million in God advertisements. Damn. Yeah, from Instagram, Facebook. Um, I did TikTok ads, YouTube ads. So with advertisements, the thing about it is, is that it's, it's really on the hook 
initial 15 seconds. You got 15 seconds to grab somebody's attention like mm-hmm. this. Um, with advertisement, it's very effective. I would say right now, YouTube is doing the best mm. because YouTube is Google. Yeah. So you're finding somebody that has the intent to actually, you know, what you're selling, they have an intent of learning it. Instagram and Facebook is the cheaper route to get traffic. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is, though, is that it's more of, um, I would say, uh, interruption marketing in a sense. Mm. Interruption marketing meaning I'm saying that somebody's on Instagram not scrolling to find your, you interrupting, you're doing a pattern interrupt to get their, you know, attention on what it is that you have, but they're not on there looking for that. Yeah. YouTube, they're on there looking for that. There you go. Because they have to manually search it or if not, you're running ads on content that is very aligned right. with yeah. what, you right. know what I'm saying, right. th- they're watching already. Yep. yep. So that makes sense. That makes sense. But the thing about it is that you got to, so with running ads, you want to, and I tell everybody, don't go run ads first. Validate your offer through shout outs or organic marketing first because when you go to ads, you've got to have money to spend. Facts. Man. You're going to know what you're doing. Yeah. Because nowadays Facts. you will blow a hell of money and get no results. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I'll Ke- be honest. Look, look at Kevin, bro. He spends like what? A million or, or some sort of He said something like 100, 200K a month on ads. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what? On ads. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and, and us personally, we run zero ads. We don't run any ads at all, guys. We and we, we've thought about it. We probably should. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but we don't run any ads whatsoever, which is great because, you know, it, 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 organic. We, it's organic and, you know, we retain a lot of our profit. But could we potentially grow at an even faster rate? Yes. Um, but, you know, the ad game. So for those people out there um, that thinking about, because a lot of people want to do, I want to do ads. I want to do ads right away. Yeah. And, you know, you almost got to reel them back a little bit. Like, hey, chill, chill, chill. What would you say is that monthly marker where, okay, you're in a position now where you can probably start running ads. What, right. what would you say is when they can do it? Yeah. So if you validate the offer, meaning that you have people for sure that wants this, they mm-hmm. paid you money. Right. You've got a few customers and things like that. Then it's OK. All right. Let's go ahead and put some of this money into advertisement. What I tell people to do and running promo and ads is two different things. Two different things. Yeah. When running your ads, I would say to at least I would spend up to what the product cost. OK. So I could break even. Hmm. So my product's a thousand dollars. I put a thousand dollars in ads. If I break even, then I know, OK, we got some. Obviously, I want to profit. But this is why it's important to have in the back end stuff. The back end mean is that you have other products on the back end to sell them. For instance, with McDonald's, they're not making all the money off of you eat a Big Mac. It's everything else. Mm. The upgrades, the upsells, right? So it's like when somebody buys a course. is where they make, from what I've been told, that's where they make a lot of their money. Because mm-hmm. it costs like no money yeah. to put soda there. Exactly. And then they're charging you $3 for a cup. Yep. I just buy the chocolate milk. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but so that's the reason why um, if if I can break even on the front end, again, if I profit, I'm great. But let's say, for instance, I got a $50 product. Yeah. I'm going to spend up to $50 to obtain a customer. But once I get a customer, I'm maintaining that and, well, hopefully that they'll ascend um, to the higher ticket offer, right? So get let's say, I don't know, I spend 1000 Mm. Let's say, of course, it's $50. It's some quick math. $50, let's say I got five people or 10 people that pay me for 50, 50 bucks. 10 people that pay me $50, right? 10 mm. customers. Probably two or three of them are going to go to the next level product. Yeah. And then, so then if I spent 500 bucks on ads, right? Mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm going to end up being in a profit zone because those other two people also pay me more. Yeah. Up, so I'm paying more. And that's the whole thing. It's like the front end is the small, low ticket stuff or whatever, whatnot. And then the back end is the higher ticket things. Okay. Hmm. Now, what is your suggestion? So how much do they be making a month before they, or you're just saying in general, the general rule is if you're going to run ads, at least like it's, it's a test it out, match, yeah. it, match it with your, your one of your products. Absolutely. Okay. So how, what do you suggest people run as far as like having products? Should they have one low ticket, one mid ticket, one high ticket, or should they only run? I've heard some people, I only do high ticket. Fuck that shit. I don't do any low ticket. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? It depends. Yeah, it depends what, what niche you're in and what, you know, what you, what your how you can deliver your product. Cause there's mm-hmm. some stuff like, for instance, the guy that's selling how to, you know, 
sleep with strippers. Yeah. I don't know what high ticket stuff he's going to do with it. Yeah. I don't know. He's going to take you to the strip club and show you. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you know, we should do a boot camp with that, man. <laughs> you could, man. I mean, <laughs> I'm always there. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it depends on, um, again, what product and stuff you're selling. Mm -hmm. But if you start off with the low ticket, um, which is totally fine. You can start there, but what I would do is create a op, uh, a capture page to get them in as a lead. So, for instance, right now, Facebook, TikTok, they have this thing called a lead ad. So, a lead ad is basically where they can you if you, the advertisement pops up, right? You put your name and email in. It's a form that pops up. You never leave the page. So, it's a Instagram or Facebook form. You, your name and email goes in there. You click the submit and it never leaves and goes off of your website. The reason why those work the best right now is because Facebook and Instagram gets paid for you to stay on their page. Yes. If you stay on their content, they're making money. They don't want you to leave. Right. So they're going to, they're going to get that out to more people, you know, because they're like, all right, well, we'll push these ads because we're not letting you leave the platform. Mm. And so lead ads is something that we teach, you know, as well too, because it's a very quick way to get somebody's information. Cause again, just like dating, if you get the girl's number, you're not necessarily going to hit that night. You might have to do a couple calls, you know, so you might have to, yeah. run, you know, yeah, yeah. so you just, got, you just got to lead, you got to lead at least, right. you know, that you yeah. can potentially try exactly. to close. Exactly. So, and think about it. Who's the number one guy we know for running ads? Ty Lopez. That yeah. nigga was everywhere. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so yeah. YouTube. Not anymore. He fell Not off anymore now, now. But but still. But before, yeah. Yeah. With the Lamborghini and, and, and the book in the book, yeah. Bro, legendary. Yeah. yeah. But now, but nowadays, like, yeah, I've I've seen him in forever. He fell off. I don't know what he's doing. Well, he's well, still making money, but he's I, he's doing. I'll other say this. Stuff. Yeah. He didn't fall off. That nigga just made a different type of money. Yeah, his he got what he needed. Yeah. He's, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's out of the social. What I mean is that he's fallen off off the social media world. Like you know, he's over here buying. What was that clothing company he bought? Get what it was. I can't remember exactly. He but some, uh he bought something. He he made what it what he need to make P or something. Yeah, he did. I don't fucking know. That nigga good, bro. Yeah, he's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, of course, of course. But like he segment he, like he that's like a perfect example of someone like using this the ads, right? Making this money on social media, then bang, now I'm gonna get into you know buying stores and shit. Like that. Yeah. You know, Grant um, Cardone though. You see Grant Cardone ads all the time. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah he's still. he's still yeah, going hard. Which I think he charges like hundred K for like four or five Zoom like uh Calls one on one calls with him, and he has that tennis, like that. Tennis co a conference too, as well. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, which so that's making big. a lot of money, you know. And, uh, and he's a great salesman, man. I mean, people, you know, I, I know he got in that whole debate with uh, what, what's it called? Uh, with Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort. I would say he's a better marketer than salesman. If that makes sense, I think so. He, he's a great marketer. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, both. I mean, he don't even do his sales no more. It's fucking. He's got like a whole goddamn like. <laughs> so he's, he's a good marketer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like his team does it. Card, right. Yeah, the, right. the Cardone Capital, man. And then on top of that. Because he's buying the real estate, he has the real estate. He's raising the money for it. It's like a win-win because he employs people. Then he also has real estate. That's why he pays no taxes. No taxes. Bro. Mm -hmm. Look at crazy. He bought a jet <laughs> at the end of the year to like not pay taxes. Bro, yeah. that's, some, that's, that's legendary. If you employ people and you house people, that is how you break the code and not pay taxes. That's how Trump. That's how Trump don't pay taxes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, um, okay, chats, uh, Chris, or yep. All right, I read these chats real quick, and then just bring his Instagram real quick, and then we'll just find. Yeah, out yeah, yeah. Let's where definitely, find you. yeah, definitely talk about Instagram. Is it what, what else? I'm trying to think here. Oh, we talked about building a funnel. Oh, oh no, we talked about pricing and branding. Talk about scales and growth. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll, we'll hit that next. Um. All right, so we got here. Uh, ten bucks, monster. Uh, F and F. I just want to come uh up here. Show you some love. I started my own YouTube after watching you guys rise. I do cinematic camping vlogs, and I know how hard it is to build the channel for the. Oh, read that one, Chris. Canadian saying. Canadian saying. Hey guys, I'm a mechanic making 180k. If I really want to start making money, do I have to charge, uh, change my career? No, no, you don't, bro. Hell, you could do a YouTube channel off of you being a mechanic, bro. Or yep. like you can sell a course yep. on how to teach people how exactly. to like you know fix cars and like you know at an entry level. And um, internet money is the way to go. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. Um, okay. So we could talk about um sales and uh scaling up. So or or yeah, scaling up and growth in general. Okay. There you go. Um, uh, Chase Sudla, yeah, Buck says, What's up, FNF crew? Always glad to hear ways to enhance my business. I'm a certified landlord and a partner of a property management company in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, nice, great stuff. And then, uh, Nate Higgins, uh, I think it was he's meant to hate niggas, this is supposed to be his shit, but he changed that. <laughs> uh, could you help someone with the NSFW art business? Yeah, how, how would you, uh, how'd you, how would you help with that one? That, that's yeah, not safe for work, that, that's tough. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's definitely a bit different. <clears throat> um, 
the thing is I would have to figure out well, how do they get in their customers? How, how, and how do you teach people? So if you, with our business like that is how can you go out and basically show somebody to duplicate your success? Yeah. That's what people are paying for. Guys, right. if you got questions, you guys, you guys should super chat in your questions right now, bro. While Chris is here, you guys want to ask him about, you know, scaling up your online business or how to get more customers or whatever. This is the time to ask, man. He's here. Go ahead, send in the chat and uh, we'll read it and he'll answer it on air. We could do a quick little Q and a at the end. So uh, let's talk about, um, Scaling and growth. Yep. So when it comes to scaling your business, right? We're on. See, most people think about like, oh, this, you know, quick little money grab and things like that. But when it comes to scaling, one, you have to figure, okay, well, how do I put a team in place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because in order for you to have that income stream that's passive, semi, or whatnot, and not have to work your butt off, you know, trying to go out find new customers and all this other stuff, is having a team. So one of my first hires was customer service. One of the best investments, ugh, man. Listen, because you have customers <laughs> that they might pay ninety seven dollars for a product and they didn't get the login from the email because it went to spam. They're gonna go crazy. They go crazy, right? Yep. So customer service is definitely somebody. And the good thing about it is that you can go to somewhere like the Philippines, four or five dollars an hour, hire virtual staff. They work for you. And the good thing is that they work all times throughout the night. You know, they were. The graveyard shift is what yeah they call exactly. It. <laughs> so customer, foreign labor guys yeah. So customer service is what you want to hire. Yeah, <laughs> Philippines. Next is um, having somebody to to do sales. Mm. Right. So for instance, my sales guys here with me um, yep. here today, Mike. Shout out to Mike. Shout out to Mike, man. Mike. Yep. And so you want somebody also to sell your products, sell your high ticket stuff, because also, you know. You don't want to be the person that's selling your own stuff. Of course, yeah. It's just bad positioning. Yeah. In, in the beginning, it's, in the beginning, it's okay. It. Yeah. But later on, yeah, for sure. You need you want a sales team. It, it, uh, it adds a layer of removal, a layer of separation, lets you clear up things. And also, yeah, it looks better. Yeah. Once again, Grant, he's an authority figure now. He can't be there like, hey, buy my course. Because <laughs> yeah. a sales team does it for him. Yep. Because people, uh, think about this. If y'all call to buy one of his stuff and he gets it on the phone, there's like a celebrity shock of, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And then they, you know, it's just gonna mess up bad position. Yeah, yeah. So you want the, so customer service salesperson, and then um, what I would hire next with scaling was a project manager. So somebody to basically manage a lot of the projects and things from launches or from where we're gonna be going next with this new product, um, you know, that we're gonna be offering, or we have a software that we offer with our uh, real estate uh, customers. So having a project manager is managing all of the different things that goes into it because. We're we're spending about twenty grand a month in ads, mm. um, you know, from Facebook, Instagram, and uh, we're doing Snapchat. From, I mean, Snapchat. Not Snapchat. It's not Snapchat, but TikTok. Excuse me. Oh, sure. Okay. We're doing TikTok, and now we're getting back on YouTube. Okay. So, um, you know, just having all of that stuff to be managed or whatever, and so those are the different ones that you, different people that you want to hire on to manage your online business. Um, you know, so that way again, you're not doing everything yourself because. Yeah. Some people, what happens is, is that they become entrepreneur and, you know, they get caught up with all the money and stuff like that. But really, all they have is an overpaid job. Mm, that's true. Nobody became an entrepreneur to have an overpaid job. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a good point. You know, you want to start delegating stuff. I mean, yeah, like our YouTube, we have a guy that manages it for us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have time to sit there and, you know, do the thumbnails and, you know, do the clips and put all that stuff. It's like, nah, you just don't got time for it, bro. Yeah, pretty much, man. Like if you can delegate your tasks to somebody else, you focus on your main thing that you, yeah. that you do well. We have a copywriter, you yeah. know, so we yeah. do course launches. He handles that. So, yeah. yeah. So that's that's the thing. And, and I got web designers and copywriters and stuff like that as well, too. Of course. Um, but yeah, that's what you want to be able to really scale out because then you can focus on what it is that you're good at doing, which is supposed to be marketing and teaching. Yeah. My mentor always told me, like, focus on what you're good at 100%. All the other, like, incidentals or stuff that, like, you, you're not good at per se 100%. That I get to, uh, to other people yeah. that then focus on that because that's their expertise. And as a result, once you focus on your passion or what you're, what you're good about, then you can grow that and scale that up. The only thing that I'd say what I learned about scaling like fast mm-hmm. is that you want to make sure you definitely properly have the team in place. Mm-hmm. I've saw some people scale really fast to get out of hand, mm-hmm. meaning that they have more customers coming in and don't have to support to, to handle gotcha. the back end. Right. The infrastructure cannot handle the volume that they're, like them that they're Amazon, getting. Amazon, them automation Amazon stores. <laughs> I know some people that owe a lot of money for that back to customers because they got a whole bunch of people in yeah. and couldn't manage the support of all the people that they were trying to manage their stores. Damn. Oh, and I don't know if you know how much those stores would cost. They were like 30, 40 grand. 
Damn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you want to have that support to be able to manage the customers that are coming in and make sure they have an overall good experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because if you want, you, you don't want it. You don't want to just get them to buy once from you and never again. Exactly. You need them to come back. Exactly. Another couple you know? of retention is important. Retention, yeah, yeah, it's very important. Yeah. yeah, shit, man. Okay, and then uh, okay, so we covered it. Look, quick, man, we covered a lot there. <laughs> quick little recap. I know what you. a lot of gems here. Yeah. Go follow Detroit Mogul Chris Bruce because he dropped some, some gems here. Yeah, man. So uh, we went over. Um, so number one, guys, uh, as far as like, let's say you got a skill and you want to be able to get out there and sell your product, right? So number one, you need promo, right? You got to get out there and uh, pay a page or some big YouTuber, whatever it may be, to get your face out there, build your audience, right? Then you're going to have a unique sales proposition, right? So in this case, we use the example of Domino's, right? Or in your case, you had, hey, I will help you wholesale homes from the comfort of your home mm -hmm. with your laptop. You'll never have to step foot in a property, yep. right? That's going to be very enticing mm -hmm. to people. And then next is your unique mechanism, aka this is the how-to, right? And in your case, you had the taco method, which is text, analyze, call, and offer for your real estate business. And then um, number four, is building a funnel where you have a lead capture page. And then what was after that? After sales page. The sales page. Yep. Right. And then copy. And then, yep. Sales page, copy, upsells. Okay. Sales page, copy, upsells. And then, and then we talked about throughout the show, you know, um, you know, what, what an internet landlord is, uh, the course, um, co uh, pricing, branding. We talked about low ticket versus high ticket, mm -hmm. um, scaling up and growth. And then is there anything else? I'm trying to think here. Nah, that's pretty much yeah, we it. covered a lot yeah, here. Covered a lot. Yep. Um, yeah, oh, and in here's his Instagram. Yeah, Instagram we're gonna show quick. you guys uh, uh, the go. Detroit mogul Instagram here. Listen, man, it's funny because like even I, he's paid him like your bro. You're doing it well. <laughs> so shout out to you, man. Uh, all right, so this is a, a great business page right here. Okay, so good, so good bio. Yep, says what he does exactly. Has a, a, a option right here to, to like click to go further. Yep, and if you come down, good post. Showing lifestyle, showing business attire as well, showing um pressure fit. Hey, that looks familiar. Pressure fit. <laughs> hey, you know I mean? we lit. The Rolls Royce, Tesla, lifestyle, phone calls. So, yeah. No, good stuff, man. Good Entrepreneur stuff. lifestyle. There you go. There you go. Um, and yeah, guys, if you um, and they can hit you up on Instagram too, right? If they're yeah, absolutely, of course. Yeah, yep. Uh, send them a DM. Just send me a DM or click the link in my bio. There you, go. there you go. And the link is also at the top, guys. So a lot of you guys, we get this request all the time. Yo, I want to start an online business. I want to have a. I want to sell a product. I want to, you know, but I don't have an audience. This is it right here. Here you go. Here you go. This is your man right here. He's going to teach you how to do it. Build the audience. Help you out. He's going to give you 120 of his plugs for promo, which is crazy. Yo, I'm and not he's going... giving that to you guys. Guys, that alone right there can change your life. Yeah, having a promo source you can trust that gives you an audience, man. That's yeah. priceless. People pay thousands, hundreds of dollars for that. Millions. That's crazy in itself, yeah. bro. Uh, so there you go. Um, and he gives it to you like for free when you buy when you get the course. So uh, King Prince, uh, five bucks. How do I use it for my club promoting business in Atlanta? Oh, it's actually do. So um, what I would do is for your club promoting, because Atlanta is a big, you know, club area, strip clubs, clubs huge market, like that, right? For huge, huge market for that. So with promoting clubs, what I would do is I would shoot some type of video content on the club, right? Mm -hmm. So have some B-roll, B-roll, basically. And then you can put that as an Instagram video, and then you can sponsor that post and run the ads to that simple way. Or you could do like paying um, a shout out page, like a like a Hollywood Unlocked, for instance. There you yeah. go. You, you know, they're may, way cheaper than Shade Room. They got two or three million followers, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you can run that video to them. And, you know, your audience for clubs. And is go to maybe big inf pay big influencers in the Atlanta yeah, area to come exactly. and do a pop up at your spot. Yep. Yep. And right. then just pay them to, you know, any, any, think about all the Atlanta artists. Yeah. Migos, the chains. You know, some of those bigger artists are obviously going to charge more money, yeah. mm -hmm. but you're going to get a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of eyeballs, you know, and there's smaller artists that are not going to pay, you know, charge as much either. Mm -hmm. Think about, I, I tell people, say, listen, some of those musicians not making as much money as you think. Yeah, Facts. They're not. <laughs> Facts. I did not realize that. They so, will take what they can get. Yeah. So you can hit them, you know, and they take, Give me six hundred, bro. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of them not making as much money, you know, and so you can hit some of those people up, and 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 that's what I would do if I had to um trip out, promote clubs anyway. Yeah. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and definitely I would say like the biggest thing is like I would say focus on people that potentially like live in Atlanta because you you right. you have a domain dependent right. place that's lo geographically located, so you, locate location dependent so you would want people in the area that have influence in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, is uh what else? Chris, anything else? One second. Um, 
and then we got okay eight uh yeah eight eight two oh uh one of my paintings is going to be an exhibition in brazil how can i sell more prints of my other paintings so if it's going to be in brazil um be an exhibition in, in, an i'm exhibition. assuming maybe in a museum in you could do the brazil? same thing and market it on instagram yeah, that's all it would be. Uh, yeah. you know, because it, especially Instagram, because it's made for photos and videos. Right. That's definitely the place that I would market it. You know, out of any other platforms. Believe it or not, though, I mean, TikTok is not great, but it does go viral. Yes, yes fast it does. There. It does crazy for exposure. Yeah. The only thing about it is like what I noticed with with TikTok is especially if you make like crazy content like we do, like it it can mess you up. We've had like six or seven TikTok accounts like banned now because. Yeah. The problem with TikTok is it's easy to go viral, but you go viral in the wrong way because what happens is they push your content out to people that don't even like your shit. So like they push yeah, our stuff out to like sure. feminists or people that weren't necessarily on our target audience. They see it. They're like, oh, my God. Like, what is this? Oh, dang. And then they just report it. You know how these people be. He'll be fine, though. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. The average person will be fine. Yeah, yeah average you, person will be fine. You guys are good. As long as you guys aren't <laughs> saying the crazy shit we say on the Internet. <laughs> um, no more bullshit. Uh, <laughs> five bucks. Where can I get somebody to make a course? Fiverr, or is there an app that I can make the course on? Yeah, I mean, you, you, well, you don't make the course on Fiverr, but yes, you could potentially find somebody on Fiverr, you know, to build out the actual course for you, mm -hmm. yeah. put it on Teachable, or you can put it on Kajabi, Kajabi, which is what we use. Yeah, Kajabi's good. Yeah. Kajabi's it's a little more expensive, though. A little more expensive, though. It is, definitely is, but it's so worth it. To yeah, me. Yep. it's good. Yeah. It's a, to, like, give your customers a good user experience, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I would say Teachable and Kajabi are probably the top two, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, no more, uh, oh no, no fake, uh, uh, fake Jenny. I'm 18 years old and I want to learn, uh, to make money to help my fam. What is the best way to do that for someone my age? Internet money. Skill, my friend, you got to get a yeah. high income skill. Definitely. Once you have a high income, once you have a high income skill, meaning once you have something, even at, even at 18, if there's something that you're good at, I tell people, think about what is something that comes easy to you, harder for others. Bam. Mm -hmm. That's well, what well, you can you name like five or ten high income skills for people on the internet that they that they could potentially if they don't have it now maybe they can learn sales is one of them sales sales, sales, sales. marketing i mean they go hand in hand yeah. yeah but sales marketing communication i would say um if you're selling something on fitness is actually yep. super huge yep um i have a friend right now his uh, wife did like 4.5 million dollars in the pandemic Damn. Selling a twenty dollar, fifteen dollar a month, uh, Zoom fitness, three four times a week. That's Damn. crazy. Fifteen dollars a month. That's crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. So you know, um, but yeah, I would say those copywriting, those, copywriting yep. is definitely a high end. You definitely copywriting for sure. Um, so yeah, I would probably put those in the top five. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, anything else? Oh yeah, Chris, second, uh, right here. And then Joshua Deal. I think this is is this the last one. No, I think that. Uh, yep. Okay. Time. Maybe a long shot. Can you put highlight it? Highlight it. Yep. To make sure it's not. Okay. Maybe a long shot. But how uh, can I get more customers from my mobile detailing business? I give out cards, have Instagram and Facebook, but it's not getting much. Uh, not getting much. I'm in Long Island, New York, by the way. Okay. So mobile detailing. If you're a mobile detailing, again, you want to paint the visual of when they go through your mobile detailing. How is the experience going to be different? You know. The way you wash a certain car, make it stand out from, you know, however it is, you know, when you're washing and cleaning it, that you want to give people experience. Video yeah. is super, super important. Yeah. If you can video B-roll some of you getting in there, detailing it and showing how clean, you know, the, the car is. Might be good to get a good video editor to, yeah. to, to yeah. do that for you, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you start to put that out there. That's going to work way more effective than your business cards. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Business cards are almost obsolete. They're all dated, yeah, bro. They are. You know, if anything, like, you know, you can get like one of those popples or some shit like that where you can like tap your phone right. and then they have all your contact information. That's way better. Yeah. The new business card in 2022 is your Instagram. It is. 100%. Yeah. No, it is. It's your resume, your Instagram. That's everything. Yep. yep. Big facts. Um, all, right. all right. Cool. So uh, where can they find you, bro? Yeah, where can they find you, bro? Yeah. So Instagram, of course, Detroit Mogul. Um, definitely go on there. But then go to the Internet Landlord, the Internet Landlord dot com. Facts. And guys, if you want to start up your online business, you want to start selling stuff, you got a skill, you might not necessarily have, you know, the reach or the clout. He's going to teach you how to do it. He's going to build your website for you, build your funnel for you, help you start making sales, give you the contact so that you can promo your stuff. I mean, bro, it's all in one right here, man. So uh, you heard it here first. Yeah, guys, you heard internet it here. Internet money is the best money. Ab yeah. Absolutely, man. Create your wealth on the internet, preserve it through real, real estate, estate, crypto, index funds, whatever you want to do. But you need to make the money first to be able to invest it, guys. All right. And he's going to teach you how to do that. Uh, any last words for the people? 
No, that's it. Um, I appreciate you know being on here again. Um, I always love coming over here with coming over more often. Yeah, man, you gotta come to Miami more often, bro. Yeah. All right, man. It was fantastic, guys. We'll All catch guys. you guys here in a little bit. We got uh, Brandon Carter coming in here in about probably 20, 30 minutes. So we'll catch you guys in a bit. Peace. Peace.